Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. Continuing along with our discussion of the outer core, or the layers of the Earth, we go from the crust, that's our thin, cool, solid outermost layer, inwards to the mantle, that's our plastic, uh, thick, warm layer. Now we're getting into the outer core, which is this spherical shell surrounding the solid inner core, which is the center of our Earth. Now, as far as properties go for the outer core, it's pretty easy to remember because it has some, some very distinct things about it. So the first and most important, you recall that the crust in the mantle, although the mantle is in a constantly flowing state and it's much more plastic, both are solid. This is our first liquid layer of the Earth. The outer core is liquid and it is composed of mostly nickel and iron. As far as depth goes, it extends from about 2,890 kilometers. You'll recall that's where the mantle ends. So right at that boundary with the mantle, and it goes to about 5,150 kilometers, or about 3,000 to 5,000 kilometers if you just want a more general idea. As far as temperature goes, logically the core, or excuse me, the crust is pretty cool. The mantle continues to get warmer. This is just outside the inner core, so it is quite warm. This gets up to about 4,000 through 6,000 degrees Kelvin, um, which if you want Celsius, then that's about, uh, let's see, 4,000 excuse me, it's 4,300 degrees Kelvin, I believe, which is more like about 4,000 degrees Celsius. Uh, 4,000 through 5,700 5, degrees Celsius. Uh, that's, that's a really big number in degrees Fahrenheit. Can't tell you off the top of my head. So these are the three big properties I want to talk about with the outer core. Um, just liquid, nickel, and iron. It's um, not quite as thick as the um, mantle, wherein it's more like about 2,000 kilometers deep, while the mantle is almost 3,000 kilometers uh, deep. And it continues to get even warmer, um, with almost a 2,000 degrees Celsius difference between its boundary with the mantle and its boundary with the core, the inner core. Now there's just one more thing to talk about with the outer core and that is that it is responsible for generating our, our magnetic field, the Earth's magnetic field. And if you're familiar with electrochemistry, this should make sense, because since the outer core is in a constant liquid state and it's constantly flowing. This allows for what are called eddy currents to form. Which are electrical currents that that create or alter magnetic fields. So since the outer core is in a liquid state, it allows for much easier ion exchange and ion movement. So this allows for the eddy currents to form, and eddy currents in this case are responsible for the generation of our magnetic field. Um, just for a sense of scale here, the outer core, the magnetic field at the outer core itself is about 50 times that. fifty times as strong as the, as the magnetic field we see at the surface. So 
So yeah, try taking a compass if you ever go down there. But that's all I really wanted to talk about as far as the outer core goes. Much more uh, straightforward and to the point. I would draw out the eddy currents, but they're not as, uh, not as easy to draw as the convection currents, which are just simple loops. Um, but just try to imagine the uh, liquid the liquid of the outer core constantly in motion, ions moving freely about, which allows for the electrical current and thus a magnetic field to be generated. Well, that's about it for me for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully it was informative. Otherwise, good review. Hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Ciao.